Welcome back to EDU and 90. Today, we'll focus our episode on Google Arts and Culture, which you might be familiar with from the viral art selfie tool you can use to find your art doppelganger. But Arts and Culture is a resource that offers so much more than that. And today, we'll look at this free resource and how it can be useful in the classroom. Here we go. Google Arts and Culture was developed through close collaboration between Google and arts partners like museums around the world. It houses content that can be experienced through a variety of mediums, including video, virtual and augmented reality, 3D models, and super high-res images. You can search the huge range of artwork by artist, movement, or even a specific historical event. From there, you can browse a selection of high-resolution pieces of art right from your Chromebook or device. Some pieces, like Van Gogh's Starry Night, are gigapixel images, allowing you to get an even closer look than you could in a gallery. As part of arts and culture, Google has collaborated with tons of different museums. In the Natural History Project, you can use Google Cardboard to see the giraffe a titan in 360 degrees. You can also use Street View to navigate through the American Museum of Natural History. My personal favorite is History of Magic. For this project, we partnered with the British Library to go behind the scenes of their Harry Potter exhibit, including early notes from J.K. Rowling and illustrations from Jim Kay. The Arts and Culture team partnered with Google Expeditions, enabling educators to transport their students across the globe with AR and VR experiences. So whether you're in Melbourne or Minneapolis, you can take your class to visit St. Paul's Cathedral in London. And in partnership with TES, there are more than 200 educator-created lesson plans to accompany some of the expeditions. Check them out in the episode description below. Arts and Culture can also be a curation hub, where you can build your own galleries, share existing ones, and empower students to create their own for a specific topic. These galleries can have a mixture of content and writing, and once they're complete, you can easily share to Google Classroom. That just skims the surface of all the great content on Google Arts and Culture. It can be accessed on the web or through the iOS and Android apps. Be sure to check out the notes below for some of our favorite projects, and tell us in the comments about your favorite features or ideas for using it in the classroom. That's a wrap for today. We'll see you in the next episode. Be sure to subscribe to the Google for Education YouTube channel for more EDU in 90. Want to learn more about Google Earth? Check out our last episode for ways to use it in your classroom.